I'm with Australian show jumper Rowan Willis, who's talking to us from Spruce Meadow in Canada, where he's just wrapped up the five-week five-star show. His results included a win in the 150 class, a fourth place in the Queen Elizabeth II Cup, and winning the Derby today. Rowan, welcome to Australian Jumping, and thanks for talking to us, and congratulations on your performances at Spruce. As I can tell you, there's been a lot of us back home who have been staying up late and getting up early to watch the live stream. Uh, it's great to hear that, Seamus. Yep, yep, good to talk to you. Yeah, well... I've had, well, a, I've had a great time here at Spruce, so, yeah. So we'll come back to Spruce, and obviously we're going to be talking about your WEG preparations, but first I'd just like to find out a bit more about where you've been and what's got you to this point. And I understand in a roundabout way it was your dad, David, that set the stage for your first experience with horses. What was the story there? Yeah, well, um, my mum had always wanted a horse, but she'd, she'd lived in Sydney and, and never been able to have one. And then dad bought her a horse for her, her 30th birthday. And then, yeah, my sister and I, uh, Renee, we, of course, wanted a horse as well. And, and um off we went. I think we started with one, and I remember Dad telling a friend that he couldn't see why we well, why we um, needed more than one horse each. And then, even a few years later, I think we had probably six or seven horses each. So <laughs> yeah, he started he started off a bad thing there. It was a very expensive horse he bought. Well, it's it's paid off in the long run. Uh, I understand that you're also you're a product of the Warrialda Pony Club up near Armadale, and and you got your early jumping direction from Gail Hunter. What do you remember about your time training with Gail? Yeah, Gail was great. She um, she taught us to be to be very competitive and and to win. And yeah, the first few of my good horses, uh, especially Hollywood Star, and then the, the horse of hers that was uh, unfortunately caught in that um, the her trailer fire, Umatilla Rancher. I was very lucky enough for her to to actually give him to me for my fifteenth birthday present, and and he won a, he won a lot for me and did me. Taught me a taught me a lot, and and Hollywood star. Uh, yeah, she took me to winning Grand Prix when I was fifteen, I think. So, yeah, definitely, I were a good start. And I understand that you're a godfather to Jake and his brother. W- were you aware that as young kids that they were plotting to come and join your team in England? Should something unforeseen happen to Gail and Craig? Well, yeah, they'll probably be over here beating me in a bit. So. <laughs> well, uh, that'd be good. It'd be good to have them over there beating me. I wouldn't mind that at all. It must be pretty cool to see Jake developing so well as a great young rider. Yeah, he's doing a fantastic job there, and as we know, how Ireland's a great breeding ground for for, for world top top class riders. So yeah, and it, it, he's, he's well on the way. In your mid-teens, you kind of bolted from being one of the shortest people in the class to being obviously quite tall, which is something I can relate to. How did that impact on your riding style at the time? Uh, well, I've always, I've always had a bit of a, a problem keeping my upper body under control. And those, um, yeah, the, when I can, when I can sit up and, and keep that a bit, you know, a bit better position, it it seems to help me. Um, it's something I've had to work on my whole whole life, but I, I try to try to keep it under control. Yeah. And you, you've always got on well competing mares, and one of your best horses back then in Australia was, as you mentioned, that Hollywood star who came from Gale. Tell us a bit more about her. I got her off the, off the race. Well, Gale had just got her off the racetrack, and um, I tried her at Gunnedah Show and jumped her in a junior class there, and, and we seemed to get along pretty well. She didn't have many breaks, but yeah, it wasn't my biggest worry. At that point, <laughs> and um, yeah, away away we went, and I the first my mum um, actually bred bred a foal from um, from her by by Vicky Roycross Stallion uh, Premier de Heights, and and I took him over to England as a six year old, and he, he qualified for the Fox Hunter Final, which is a, a big um, uh, young horse class at the Horse of the Year show and yeah he did a great job in England and yeah did kind of jumped up to 155s nationally and internationally and yeah it was a great horse for me so that 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 mare lasted a long time. 
And she was an off-the-track thoroughbred, as you said, and, and, and I think, remember, you won the champion junior jumper at the Sydney Royal on her, but do you still see a place for the thoroughbreds in show jumping today? Well, I certainly, I think the, the horses, the, the horses now have to have a lot of, um, a lot of blood about them, you know, they're getting much quicker and agile, and I think the, the kind of heavier, warm blood types uh, just can't. You know, can't win in the sport today. You know, every Grand Prix, every class you jump in, you know, obviously you have to jump clear, but you have to be, you have to be very fast. And that's one thing I've, I've noticed. Uh, probably one of the biggest differences over here in, in North America is the time allowed. The, even in our first round, we, you know, we have to virtually be against the clock. And, and when we're in the, in the Grand Prix at, you know, 160 and with a really tight time allowed, it's, the horses have to be have to have plenty of blood and be very quick and agile. Okay, um, so the thoroughbreds is obviously at least in the breeding programs they're they're going to be important at the higher yeah, levels. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and yep. you you had some early success in the green and gold, winning for Australia at an international show in Hong Kong. How old were you then, and, and how do you think that win affected your ambitions and career path from then on? Yeah, that was a great experience. Um, jumping for Australia, I was just just 18 and uh, had a fantastic time, and we were lucky enough to, to win the teams then, and that was very, yeah, very very proud moment to to jump for your country, and and afterwards I I did a little bit of travelling to Canada and and uh, England, and then you know realised that that I think in you know in those countries it's a huge industry, and and if you go well you can make a good living. So yeah, that's that kind of took me took me to England really, and so, so um, you, unfortunately when, you can't do it in Australia. So yeah, yeah and when you left right. Australia, you, you were riding in Jan Hayes Yard in Canada, and how did you end up from there in the Welsh's Yard in the UK? Well, I was quite quite lucky. The the riding in, um, the head riding instructor at at Negs, the the girls' school in Armadale where my sister was. She, she's an English lady, and she's from the village um, Sherfield on Loddon. And when she was when she was younger, and she would go and work for Fred Sue Welsh on her weekends and school holidays. So she she told me that uh, if I wanted to ride horses when I was in England, then to to give him a ring, and and she'd be sure that I could go and go and work there. So so I did, and. Um, had a great time for a month or so, and then he offered me a job to, yeah, to come back the next year and, and ride full time for him. So I told my mother I wasn't going to go to university and, <laughs> and packed my bags and went to England. And since then, you've been based in the UK with uh, Aussie eventing icon Russ, Russ Hardy. Did that relationship help you get the ride on a verse? Because he was an eventer before you took him over, wasn't he? actually bought a verse for, for a friend of mine, Sam Griffiths, to go eventing on. And um, and Sam, yeah, Sam had a good time with him as a five-year-old, but unfortunately he wouldn't settle for the dressage. So Dinah sent him back to me to, to go show jumping, and yeah, it was her first show jumping horse, and he's never looked back since then. And you've got some seriously good owners, like, you know, Aussies, Warren Commentary, and Michael Jackson, who are part owners of Blue Movie, and, and that, like you've said, uh, Dinah Ponsford, who also owns Sam's uh, two Olympic horses, Happy Times and Paul Ank Rockar. And even though she's English, she's been an incredible supporter for both Sam and yourself. How important is it for you to have great owners like that? Yeah, it, may, it makes it, you know, all possible. And um, my, my parents and my sister are also... Uh, part, part owners of a blue movie, so it's a it's a very good, you know, New England um, New England owned horse there, and which is uh, you know doing doing is great. And those guys travel around the world and and, and watch you in, in big competitions too. Yeah, yeah, nearly. Um, that's, yeah, once a year they kind of always meet up with me where wherever we are in the world, and yeah, we have a good time and. Hopefully, a bit of success, and um, yeah, it's great. So they're they're looking forward to 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 Weg and 
and wherever else we, we may end up in the near future. Okay, and your number one horse, obviously, Blue Movie, she's been a long-term project. In fact, I heard that when you broke her in, uh, even though it was the middle of winter in the UK, she was so sensitive that you could only wear a T-shirt when you rode her because any movement or noise would set her off. Tell us her start-up story, and I'd love to know how she got a name, too. What were you watching at the time? <laughs> but there we go. And, um, in her early she's days? Been very, yeah, she, she's always been extremely, um, extremely sensitive. We actually couldn't catch her till she was uh, a two-year-old. She was so strong and and um, yeah, wild to say that, that yeah, we just we couldn't catch her. And then we we ran them all into the barn. She was with a group of um, about five or six other two-year-olds that Sue had bred. So we ran them into the barn and then I actually lassoed her and uh, had a big Polish guy working for me and he, he pulled her in and then we we finally got a head collar on her and yeah, so we it was a long it was a long process breaking her in. She she was very, very touchy. I think it took us about six months to get a pair of front boots on her, so Did you ever think of giving uh, up? I, no, well I knew that I knew that um I knew she'd be very careful in the ring because yeah. <laughs> she, she doesn't like touching anything, and, and I always had a, a really good feeling that she, you know, that if I could get her to, you know, to the top level, that that uh, she could win a lot for me. So it's taken a lot of perseverance, and probably a few times that I have thought, "What the hell am I doing? Doing? Can't you just be normal?" But anyway, if she was normal, she wouldn't. She wouldn't be what she is. Yeah, well, and, I, and I, even going back to 2016, you had three wins, I think, in the three-star level with her, and that's sort of you shortlisted for the Australian team for Rio, but um, things didn't work out there. What was the story there? Yeah, she just um, she just had a bit of a, an injury. Uh, she puts she puts so much strain on herself when, when she jumps, even even when she jumps kind of, you know, across pole, she... she, she um, puts all her effort into it so uh, it, it takes a you know takes a lot on a lot on her body and she's needed to get you know mature a bit and get a lot stronger and um, and everything to you know to, to take that and, and a lot of management and I think um, just in the last few years we've, we've worked out a good formula for her and and it seems to be paying off. Yeah, well, you had another great run in 2017 with, with a three-star win in Bratislava and a four-star in Samarin, and, and then at the beginning of this year, you've shipped the A-team over to Florida. What was the motivation for that move? Well, I've always wanted to come come and compete in America. Uh, I, I think it's, um, you know, the American riders are, are dominating the world at the moment, the first and second in the World Cup final, and... Yeah, I think they've got the, a very strong team um, to, for WEG and, and there's very good shows over here. So I, yeah, I, I um, set my aim last year to, to come over and, and jump in the, you know, the big Grand Prix here and then hopefully that would be good preparation uh, for, for WEG in September. Well, so far this year, just in America, I, mean, I know Blue Movies, she won the five-star Grand Prix in Acala, and she scored a very lucrative second in the million-dollar Grand Prix in California, and now this weekend, a fantastic fourth place over what looked like an absolutely huge track in the Queen Elizabeth Second Cup at Spruce. Can you talk us through that competition in particular? Yes, yeah, it, um, it was won by Eric Lamar's and, and Fine Lady, as I'm sure everyone knows. It's one of the best combinations in the world. And he was the only double clear. Um, I was a bit of a rider error in the first round and had coming out of the combination. And then I managed to come back to the second round and and uh, my mare was super and jumped jump clear. She was one of only three clear rounds out of the 12 in the second round. And then it was quite nice to hear 
Derek Lamar saying afterwards that that uh, Queen Elizabeth II Cup is one of the one of the biggest Grand Prix in the world, and I'm sure he must know because he's probably won most of them. So, so that was very pleasing, and um, yeah, hopefully we'll you know we've qualified for the Grand Prix at the the Masters Show here in September, which which is even <laughs> bigger, which is a bit of a worry. But anyway. Um, yeah, so so we're looking forward to that one. Uh, tell me the 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 sixteen foot rails they use the, up there at Spruce. Uh, does that have a, a visual impact on the fence? Because it almost makes them look deceptively smaller than they really are. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> it's quite nice when you're you know standing outside the ring waiting to walk the course, and you think, oh, they actually don't look look too bad in there. And then then you walk in there, and yeah, you probably don't want to walk up too close, <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, you'd probably be better off walking the course from the outside, really, and you know, <laughs> looking at the course plan and then just just going in. And mate, a question: Australia has just recently announced, that obviously, that you're part of the shortlist for the jumping team going to the World Equestrian Games in September. And obviously, the withdrawal last week of Edwina is disappointing and impacts the strength of the team. But at least it looks like the team now has got some certainty about it, with just the four of you left on the shortlist. withdrawal but I think we've got yeah we've got a good good team there and and um, Scotty Keach has been doing a, a brilliant job over here he had a, a great third placing in one of the five star Grand Prix here at Spruce and his horses jump well uh, every week up here and, and been super all year really he was placed placed in the five star in Carla as well and his horse is really on form and, and so is Scott and then the two the two boys, um, Billy and Jamie, are, are doing well in Europe. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully if we all, you know, we all have a couple of good days, and then, then we'll be right up there. And you've already been able to jump in, I think, six hundred and sixty centimetre five star classes since arriving in North America. What's your final preparations going to involve for WEG over the next nine weeks? Uh, well, well, carrots. She's having a bit of a, a, a break now uh, for kind of five or six weeks, and then then we've got uh, we've got a nice um, 150 Grand Prix yeah in, in Chicago um, as her first show back after a break, and it's actually half a million dollars prize money, so that'd be nice to, to go well in that, and then two weeks and and the Masters here. Certainly, very good preparation for for Weg, and then and then kind of have weeks off, and and we'll be ready for yeah, we'll be ready for try on. And I imagine you know during the, the a meter seventy Spruce Masters would almost make the first round at Weg look um, quite jumpable. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. I think. Um, yeah. Is it? Am I right in saying there's five million dollars prize money in that class? Wow. So, so that'd be, um, that'd it's a, be a nice one to, to, to go well in. It's a good incentive, isn't it? Uh, we mentioned before we uh, Everse, and um, he seems to me to be ticking all the boxes. Uh, last year he won the Bratislava six bar, jumping a metre 90, and the Ruin Prestance jumping, I think, two metres 10, and he's winning the Samarin two star, and now at Spruce you've racked up a win in the 150 class, and uh, again, last week you did a fantastic re- a 155 round and now topped off with a, what can only be described as a masterful win in the derby. Um, all, all this shows he's got huge scope and courage and he must have genuine talent too. Uh, tell us about the derby. You, you obviously made a decision to go for clear ahead of a fast time. and I believe there's only been 21 clear rounds out of more than 650 attempts over the years that it's been run. Just took it a little bit steady in a few places in the derby, which was a bit unfortunate to get the time for. I was, I was a bit worried it was going to come and, you know, um, catch me out. But luckily enough, yeah, the, the clear round, as you just said, is very hard to come by. So um, he he just made everything very easy, and and I think, you know, certainly helped by a bit of good good eventing groundwork there from Sam Griffiths. So you think that helped you on the course? That background? Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, there's some, you know, 
the the Devil's Dyke in there is is not an easy jump, and most you know horses that have just been show jumping come unstuck there, and um, and then jumping up onto the tabletop as well, and you know up and down the bank, and yeah, all sorts. So, um, but he's he's yeah he's such a such a talented horse, and and as pr- <laughs> proven. From you know, winning six bars, please on Grand Prix, speed classes, now at Derby, I think. Would you know, you... I think he's pretty versatile. I might, I might <laughs> even chuck him in the Melbourne Cup in November. <laughs> Would you consider him for the Hamburg or the Hickstead Derby, maybe down the track? I was, I was speaking to, to Dinah this morning, and um, I'm not sure we're, we're too keen to do the Hickstead Derby. Um, hopefully, next year he'll be. You know, he'll be jumping in the in the Grand Prix, but kind of worth a lot more prize money than, than the Hickstead Derby. So, so if we can concentrate on those, um, I know Dinah will be um, certainly certainly more relieved to be <laughs> to be watching those those Grand Prix rather than the Hickstead Derby. And with his increased level in form over over the last um, sort of the season, I guess, would you think he's a possible option for you for Weg, or are you still looking longer term at Tokyo with him? Too much um, for for week this year. Uh, just just a bit of inexperience would probably catch him out in the you know in the maybe the last day of the team's competition. And um, you better be hard not to not to ride Blue Movie when she's in such good form. Oh, absolutely. But I certainly think um, you know I certainly think next year he he can do a few five star Grand Prix and and um, yeah and then. Definitely, yeah, definitely, it'd be good to have a, a couple of options leading into Tokyo next year, uh, in 2020. And you've got your top three horses, along with Shark, in, in North America, but you've also got a great reputation for, for producing the young horses, and uh, that now involves heading back to the UK to ride them whenever possible. How many horses do you currently have in work, and what qualities do you look for in young horses? seven-year-olds that, that I bred with um, Arthur and Gemma Mornington. Um, Arthur's actually the next in line to be the, the Duke of Wellington. Uh, and they've they've done well. Um, won, won a class at the World Breeding Championships last year. So uh, we've, we've just taken um, a few embryos out of her because I, I do like to do a little bit of, bit of a breeding program for, for the future. Uh, and then I've got another six-year-old um, back in England who, uh, she's a very good mare and we actually won the, the very prestigious Waylong Novice final at Royal Windsor back in May when I flew back, so she's certainly one for the future. You seem to make a habit of winning these young horse classes. Yeah, well, he's a, <laughs> um, yeah, I always try and find a few nice, yeah. nice young horses and and keep them, you know, um, look forward to the future. And, and we've also got the the, uh, the half, half-sister half of the verse as well. So um, she's one to, to look forward to in the next few years. Absolutely. Uh, now, just wrap, wrapping up, Rowan, if, if, this is a bit hypothetical, but if you could travel back in time, say, 20 years, what advice would you give your teenage self before you left Australia? Knowing what you know now. <laughs> um, gee, that's a tough question. I don't know. I, you know, always just um, have an open mind and be be willing to, to learn to learn, and you never know where, you know, where um where some good advice and it's going to come from, or where a good horse is going to come from, and you know, just just enjoy enjoy yourself and make the most of every opportunity. That's the, but I've um I've tried to live live along those lines, so yeah. And what what actually was the best piece of advice you were given as you were sort of in that stage, and who gave it to you? Well, I think I think a very good piece of advice um, came from came from Peter Charles when when he uh, you were sitting around with Eddie Mackinnon, and Eddie made a bit of a comment that that Peter had ridden us. 
a few donkeys in his time, but he'd obviously had great success on them. And and Peter did say, well, you have to you have to believe in your horses, and um, I think that's you know that's a great piece of advice. You, you know, if you put a lot of time and effort into them, and you know, and have have good faith in them, then they normally reward you well. And there's no point kind of you know losing your patience and giving up on them. Sounds like very worthy advice. So finally, Rowan, if you will, tell us one thing that we don't know about you. <laughs> well, I don't. Um, well, I don't have anywhere to live at the moment, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think the prize money you've been pulling in uh, just this year in, in America could could buy you a fairly nice farm down there around the Cala or somewhere like that. Very good, mate. Mate, uh, thank you very much for spending some time with us, and um, I wish you all the best in your lead into WEG, and uh, look forward to getting over there and watching you and the other three boys uh, live in Tryon. Yeah, it'll, yeah, it'd be a great experience, and, and um, yeah, I hope we can, you know, we can get stuck into it and get a good result. Thanks very much, Rowan. Good on you.